everyone hello. First of all, before we even start this, um, I would like to thank uh, Notre Dame for understanding that th this rivalry is about the rivalry. It's not about how we don't like the Notre Dame people or anything. It's, it's just that the Irish have a lot of rivalries. And Oklahoma is considered one of them for breaking the winning streak and all. But as far as the fans are concerned, from now I didn't go, but from what I understand, from the people that I know that did go, they showed great hospitality uh, as, as as the fans as as we do uh, here in Oklahoma, like we did a couple of like we did last year, and like we have been known to do uh, in the past. Uh, we played Florida State a couple of years ago, and uh, I, from experience, know that while we were tailgating, my mom actually offered them, uh, their fans, uh, chocolate chip cookies on the way to the football game. So the hospitality at Notre Dame was just awesome. It, it, it was just great. Um, so if you're a Notre Dame fan watching this, or you know any Notre Dame fans, just uh, have them watch at least this part as a uh, because it, it, that's very hard to find is just genuine hospitality and kindness uh, all uh, around college football. Uh, Oklahoma fans do that as well as Notre Dame. With that being said, now we can get to why we're posting the videos because the schooner sooner of Oklahoma scooted past the Irish of Notre Dame for the first time since 1956. This time also in Notre Dame, making the overall standings at 2 and 9 in favor of Notre Dame, but this one does go to Oklahoma like we said. The game was played in historic touchdown Jesus, the holy land of college football, Notre Dame, as the Sooners won 35-21 to there in South Bend. The statistics for the football game were pretty darn good for Oklahoma, as Blake Bell in his first ever start on the road. His second start overall still had a pretty good night. 232 yards passing, a couple of touchdowns, and still no interceptions as far as Bell's concerned. Tommy Reese, on the other hand, not such a good night. He had 104 yards. He did have the two touchdowns, but he had three, count them, three costly interceptions that Oklahoma turned into two points. On the rushing side, Oklahoma had their superstar running back Brennan Clay on, on again this weekend as he had 14 carries for 77 yards. However, he did not score a rushing touchdown. George Atkinson, this is a guy that last year did not come to Norman. He stayed at home in South Bend, but this time, so in his only and one and only game against Oklahoma in the regular season, pretty good night. 15 carries, a buck 48 yards, and one touchdown in the ball game. Receiving wise was pretty good for Oklahoma, as you would suspect. Passing for 232 yards. Helping him get to those 232 yards is Blake Bell. One of the men, Sterling Shepard. Making his papa proud, Derek Shepard. Sterling had five catches for 83 yards and one 53-yard touchdown pass that won Oklahoma the ball game. On the other side, T.J. Jones, four catches for 42 yards and a single touchdown. The uh, the defense was 
stellar again for OU. It uh, cost them, to turn them into three turnovers. Uh, one of those interceptions was caught by Frank Shannon. Frank, as well as that one interception, also had ten tackles as he was probably one of the leading defenders out there for Oklahoma. Notre Dame had their Sean Jackson out there with 15 tackles. Uh, Michael Honeycutt, once again, White Mike was special once again. Two for two, a, a long of 29 or 27 yards, and his short of 19. The, 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 the putting average was pretty good for Oklahoma as well. Uh, Notre Dame did not kick any field goals in this game. They were strictly touchdowns. So on to the punting realm. Pounding Jed Barnett for OU had five attempts for 42.0 on average, a long of 49, and zero hit the 20, hit inside the 20-yard line. He had a couple of chances. It just went into the back of the end zone. For Notre Dame, their regular kicker, Kyle Bridza, does a couple of their uh, punts the other night. He had five of them for 41.0 on average. 55 was his long, and zero were within the 20-yard line. They also tried another punter out there, Alex Wolfack. Wolfack did have a single punt. 37 as it was his average. His 37-yard punt did land them inside the 20-yard line. On to the scoring realm of this post-game report. And it starts pretty early. By 14-11 in the ballgame. In the first quarter, Corey Nelson, the third play from scrimmage, picks off Tommy Reese for a 24-yard touchdown interception, giving Oklahoma the lead 7-0. Then Damien Williams gets on the ball gets on the ball offensively for an 11-yard touchdown run for 215 yards. Give an 11-yard touchdown with 12-15 left, giving Oklahoma the 14-0 lead. Oh, and by the way, that 11-yard touchdown run, that put Oklahoma, I believe, right around what they rushed for last year in Norman with just that one run. But not to be outdone was Notre Dame. Because with 4.03 left, Tommy Reese found T.J. Jones in the back of the end zone for the first Notre Dame touchdown. And it's 14-7 at the end of the first quarter. Second quarter, there wasn't a lot of scoring. In fact, there was only one score. It happened with 42 seconds left in the ball game. In the, in the first half, second quarter. And Blake Bell found LeColton Bester for a 26-yard touchdown pass to give Oklahoma the lead 21-7 in South Bend. By the way, that was probably Blake's best throw of the night as far as deep passes. He had a pretty good short pass coming up later. Go to halftime break, 21-7 Sooners at halftime break. Out of the halftime break, 12-31 left, George Atkinson. Notre Dame, not to be outdone, Atkinson the third had an 80-yard touchdown jolt into the end zone. 21-14, and it's ball game on. Then it's Michael Honeycutt for his long of 27 yards with 8-11 left, giving Oklahoma a boost to the lead of 24-14. On the ensuing Oklahoma, on the next Oklahoma score with a 19-yard field goal with 2:43 left, giving Oklahoma, adding to their lead to make it 27 to 14, and thusly go to the fourth quarter with the lead 27-14. Now, before we get to the fourth quarter, on that drive with the 19-yard field goal by Michael Honeycutt, you have got to get your hat off. Take your hats off to Trevor Knight, the true freshman that uh, lost his job due to injury. I don't agree to, I, I don't always agree with that. 
You lose your job due to injury. Now, he, Trevor was ineffective, and that's probably why he lost his job. Not because he, he wasn't playing well. Not because that he's just not a good quarterback. He's just he, he was just not ready to play at starting quarterback. But you know what? He pushed that behind him, ran off a 30-yard run to put us in position to kick a 19-yard field goal. Uh, hats off to him. Uh, and hats off to Blake for coming back later in the game. Now we're on to the fourth quarter. Where Tommy Reese finds Troy Nicholas, the tight end, for a 30-yard touchdown. Score, 14-10, left in the fourth quarter. 27-21, ball game on, baby! Ball game on! But on the ensuing drive, just like when Oklahoma last year cut it within... Uh, actually tied the ball game, and then Oklahoma and then Notre Dame put a dart in a heart of Notre Dame or Oklahoma. Well, OU did the same thing to Notre Dame this time. Blake Bell found Sterling Shepard, son of Derek Shepard, a former receiver. Sterling, the current receiver, caught a 54-yard touchdown pass from Blake Bell with 12:24 left. To add the lead to 33 to 21, to add to the to add to the lead and give Oklahoma a true 14 point lead, Oklahoma went for the deuce set, and they got the deuce set to make it 35 21. The pass was to Sterling Shepard on the play. There were uh, no. Major injuries for Notre Dame. Uh, Oklahoma, uh, Brennan Clay got kind of, well, didn't get kind of, he did get popped. Uh, I mean, I'd be, he got cleaned out pretty good by the safety for uh, Notre Dame. Uh, Bob says he's fine, but it was kind of a scare to, to see that. To, and it was not, and you could say it was helmet to helmet, whatever, but. That was basically him with a face mask. <laughs> but uh, hats off to to to, uh, to Brennan for uh, sticking in there and getting that play and uh, finishing out the ball game for OU. Heupel's hype play of the night was the 54-yard nail in the coffin from Blake Bell to Sterling Shepard. You can go with any one of the 35 points scored tonight. Well, we're only 28 because the 20, the uh, 35 are they're coming in the stoopsy stop of the night. But in my opinion, it's this one, and for no, and for one reason and one reason alone, that game, that score, not only came in the fourth quarter, but it really put the ball game away for Oklahoma because now Notre Dame would have to score not one but two touchdowns. To uh, at least tie the ball game, they would have to get three touchdowns to win it, and uh, they were completely inept after that uh, eighty after that thirty yard touchdown pass to Troy Nicholas. Supsy stop of the night. Well, like I said, you can go with any of them, but let's go back to the start of the game. Fourteen eleven left in the first quarter. Corey Nelson intercepts the ball. From Tommy Reese for a touchdown. Big time plays go to big time players. This guy's a senior. He's written ready to leave. Uh, eventually, he wants to be in the NFL. He wants to do the ESPN thing. But before that, buddy, you're always going to be remembered in Sooner Glenn lore for uh, getting that touchdown pass. Uh, really uh, putting Oklahoma up 7 0. And really giving them, I, I, I like to call it an extra touchdown to play with. Um, meaning that um, from the get-go, they, they were down 7 nothing, And there was nothing that Notre Dame could do about it. And there was nothing Notre Dame did do about it. Uh, and, and they just couldn't answer it. Uh, the team offensive goals, uh, offensively, don't force mistakes. Uh, no picks, no fumbles. 
Very good on that. Uh, didn't really force it. Didn't have to. Um, at all. Um, I would like to see us get a couple more uh, fourth down conversions as our third down conversions. And um, really, uh, the belldozer, the football blaker, whatever you want to call him. He, this guy is 6'6", 250. He, he's like me, except instead of fat, it, it, it's a lot of muscle. So, in my opinion, what they need to do is just barrel this guy forward. Barrel him in there. Go behind the All-American Gabe Eichard, the senior center, and just plow in there for the first down. But, as far as the goals, uh, there weren't very many mistakes. Good job, guys. Uh... Defensively, they need to keep everything in front of them, and for the most part, they did. Uh, they let in the 80-yard touchdown run uh, by Atkinson. That was really that was really the only big play of the night for uh, Notre Dame. And uh, you know what? He's he's a special guy. He's going to be able to do that. Um, and the other ones, uh, and they uh, defensive uh, goals also. Uh, they did get a couple turnovers. Uh, they didn't give up. Really, anything on the ground besides the 80-yard uh, touchdown, uh, uh, as far as touchdowns are concerned, and they uh, and they had three turnovers and scored 21 points off of those turnovers. By the way, in the entire game, Notre Dame scored 21 points. Uh, special teams, outstanding ball games, but once again, uh, Jay Barnett, uh, great punting job, uh, 42 yards on average. Uh, Honeycutt two for two on field goals, and 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 then uh, our our, our uh, touchback specialist uh, deep kicks in the back of the end zone six out of seven touch uh, six out of the seven uh, kickoffs outstanding ball game guys uh, and, and we can finally say this the University of Oklahoma has finally found a way to once again beat Notre Dame congratulations to this football team. Congratulations to the fans of Oklahoma. I am one. We deserve this. Uh, and uh, everyone have a great night. And as always, Boomer Sooner, everybody.